Should you buy the Apple iPad Air 2020 in 2021? Here are my thoughts. Hi, my name is Christian and welcome to my channel. And on today's video, we are gonna discuss why you should or shouldn't get the iPad Air 2020 in 2021 and what I think about all of the iPads compared to each other. So let's get into it. So before I get into why I picked this specific iPad, we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. I'm excited because I am upgrading from an older iPad. This is one of the older iPad Airs and it's been through a lot, so it's time for an upgrade. Okay, so here we have our iPad Air. I also picked up the Smart Folio and an Apple Pencil. This is the second version, which is compatible with this iPad. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the plastic and it has a little pull tab on the side right here. And I'm just gonna break into the box. So I know Apple's newer products aren't gonna come with plastic. Well, at least for the iPhones, um, they just come with little pull tabs on the actual box. So this iPad is the iPad Air from last year. So it does have, uh, I believe it's an A14 Bionic chip. And here's the iPad. I got the color blue. In the box you get the manuals, a little SIM card removal because this is Wi-Fi and cellular, and of course, Apple stickers. And you get a 20 watt charging brick, which is awesome, and USB-C, which I love. Everything, Almost everything I have has USB-C, except for my iPhone, of course. Um, I don't know why Apple hasn't gotten USB-C on iPhone. It clearly fits on thin devices like this iPad. I don't know what's up. Let's go ahead and unbox the Smart Folio. I went and I went ahead with the Smart Folio because I am going to use this mostly for drawing, um, and I didn't want to get the keyboard because you can't bend it backwards. So I did get the Smart Folio, and I love this orange color. It's so beautiful. And it comes like this with a little thing inside. And let's go ahead and pop this iPad into it. I love this color blue. It looks very similar to my iPhones, just a little bit deeper. And the iPad just pops into it like that. Close it. Last but not least, let's go ahead and unbox the Apple Pencil. And the box looks like this. I don't know how to, oh, it has a little pull tab as well. Everything in Apple is engineered so, so nicely, even their boxes. Comes with little instructions. And then here you have your Apple Pencil. Another little tab, and that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this iPad on, and let's get this one set up. Okay, so it starts with the Hello Home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Okay, so my iPad is activating right now. It is through T-Mobile, so I'm guessing it has to go through the cellular process. Okay, I'm gonna set up Touch ID, and this one's Touch ID is gonna be right here on the power button, which is really cool. And I'm gonna set this up as a new iPad. Whenever I get a new Apple product, I usually like to set them up fresh. I don't really restore from iCloud unless it's my iPhone. Okay, so here's the new iPad. I set it up as a brand new iPad and I wanted to do a little comparison, size comparison of my old one. So this is the old iPad versus the new one. They're relatively the same size. The only difference is that the screen is obviously bigger on the new iPad Air. So this one is a 9.7 inch screen, I believe. And this one is 10.9. So not quite 11, but almost 11. So the reason that I chose this iPad mostly was price for value. So they do have the new iPad mini and that one comes out at around $500 but that screen is way small and I needed something a little bit bigger to be able to draw on. And then the next step up from this would be the iPad Pro. And I didn't need as much power because I'm, again, I'm gonna use this for drawing mostly and as an accessory to my computer. I do have a MacBook Pro that I do most of my things on, like video editing and all that stuff. So I didn't need so much power in a, in a iPad. So I went with the iPad Air. The only thing that I wish this had that the iPad Pro has is the ProMotion display. But again, that's a newer thing and it is a more pro upgrade. So I do understand why it's not in there. Regardless, this screen is beautiful. It is still a liquid retina display. It has the wide color gamut for true color. So when you are 
doing photo editing or anything like that, the colors are very accurate on this display. Now, they also have the regular iPad that looks more like this one, but is slightly bigger than this. And it's more of like a beginner iPad or like the starter iPad. And I didn't wanna pick that one because I wanted something different from this one. I've already had the experience of having this with the big chunky bezels and the Touch ID here. And I wanted something to look a little bit different and I didn't wanna sacrifice so much power on my mobile device. So that's why I didn't choose the base model iPad. So all in all, do I think the iPad Air from 2020 is worth buying in 2021? I personally would say, Yes, it is a great value for what you're getting. It still has a great A14 processor, which is super powerful that is found in the iPhone 12. And for me personally, it was a big upgrade from my iPad that I have right now. If you are looking for the latest and greatest, and you don't wanna get the iPad mini, I suggest you wait a couple months until they refresh the iPad Air. But for me, I was okay with getting this right now. I will be using this iPad to draw and procreate. I would do want to create some NFTs and get into the metaverse crypto space and all that stuff. So that's primarily what I'm going to be doing on this. I am going to test out the video editing capabilities on this iPad and I will let you guys know what I think of everything in a later review. So let me know in the comments below if you want a full review and what I think about the iPad after using it. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one, bye.